Well, good morning once again. This is Sam reporting in from Montana. Today's project, I'm going to complete a piece I started back in Wyoming. It's a cast piece, and this has been staring me in the face for months and months. Yeah, take my word for it. Anyway, it's a little cast piece with some burl wood in there someplace. And that's the project for today. So let me readjust and we'll get started on this. Okay, I am ready to chuck up my little project. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing, but got a feeling this is going to be turned into some sort of artsy fartsy little object. I'm not sure what I did originally, but I had this on a really big faceplate at one time. And uh, anyway, I cast that. I'm going to take this waste block down quite a bit and put a two inch tenon on there to fit these jaws. And all I'm going to do is kind of jam that up against the, the scroll chuck there. Tighten that down. Now I got my lay speed turned down so nothing terrible is going to happen. That's running fairly true so I'm going to lock her down. Okay, now I put a new sharpen on my bowl gouge here, and that's working much better. All right, I'm going to try to change my camera angle around just a little bit to make this a little bit more interesting. Alright, here we go. Now I've got a fairly nice tenon formed right there. I'm going to take a narrow parting tool and part this off. Now I have to keep in mind that this is just jammed against that. There's nothing really holding that other than the pressure from my tailstock. So if you do this, be very, very careful. And I'm probably going to just break that off at the very end and, and not part it off. I need to give my tool rest just a little bit closer to my work here. Now I'm turning about 800 RPM, not real fast. Alright, now I need to put my little project into my chuck jaws here. Alright, now one issue here, the way I broke that off is I removed my center right there. So I can reestablish that later on if I need to. But that's pretty important also to have that on there. Give that a good tighten down. Let's unlock it. We'll see how true this spins. That's not too bad. So I'm going to take some sort of a scraper and level out that surface. Alright, I'm getting quite a bit of vibration on that, so I'm going to bring up my live center. That'll help quite a bit.
All right, now I'm starting to see a little bit more of my burl. I'm sure that's a box elder. blow some of this debris away anyway all I wanted to do to this point is true this up now I can start thinking about the shape I want it's a little bit uh, short and squatty at this point I need to narrow this area down quite a bit but I'll do that Mostly after I hollow the inside, the next challenge will be finding my hollowing tools. All right, I'm going on to the next step here with my little project. And I've got some ideas. Ordinarily, what I do when I'm making a video is I do a little bit one day and I go back to my computer and do some editing. And this gives me a little bit of time to think about what I'm doing and what I'm going to plan on doing for a particular project. And I think what I'm going to uh, do with this little... I'm not sure what it is <laughs> yet, but I'm going to put maybe threads in there. I'm not sure. I've got some soft uh, box elder there that I probably can't thread. I do have some resin there. Anyway, I'm going to hollow this out. I'm going to put a little lid on it with a handle perhaps. So right now, I'm going to keep my tailstock up there for support. I'm going to do a little bit of shaping on this. And the tool that I'm going to start out with is, is, okay, here it is. And the tool I'm going to start out with is this spear point scraper. It's a Richard Raffin tool. And I got to be careful with that because it's a little bit on the catchy side. So I'm going to just uh, make this a little bit more narrow. And I'm going to come around the top here and just uh, come up with some sort of form. So here we go. I really like that tool. It does a nice job, but you've got to be careful with it. And usually I kind of put that on a little bit of a slant like that. Try not to hold it totally flat. Now you couldn't see my my tool cutting, but you could see the profile of the horizon of that piece changing. And the more I look at it, right now it looks like an apple to me, which might be kind of fun to do just to make it a little bit more roundish, like the uh, shape of an apple, and put a, 
a stock on top of that. I'm going to come around the, the top of this and just kind of clean that up a little bit. And then I'll get to hollowing this little project here. Now, I think this is a situation where it's ideal to use a drill. Just, if nothing else, to establish a depth on this. I've got a rubber band that I found lying here. And I'm just going to use that to help me determine how deep I should drill on this. Um, I like this drill, but it's got a, a Morse taper. So we'll go down to the rubber band. And I always turn my lathe speed down. I think that's a good practice. I don't need to be turning really, really fast. This is probably at 700 RPM. Plenty fast. Careful not to hold in to this area right here where the flutes are. Now my drill bit was starting to twist on me, which tells me I'm jamming up in there with my shavings. I think one more time we'll have it. Alright. Now I've got to go find one of my hollowing tools. Alright, now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tailstock and remove it from my lathe. That's always a good practice. If you're not using it, don't leave it on there. I learned that from my friend John Barkley. And John, if you're out there, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're still chasing some threads. Now what I can do here, I can make this opening a little bit bigger. It's not very big and I'm not sure how small I need to make that. Now as I was packing to come to Montana, I luckily know where my hollowing tools are. I put them in one of my mechanic cabinets. kind of taking a time out here. This is the end of the 4th of July weekend, so we've had some relatives visiting, and I just want to bring you up to speed on my little project here, the Unknown Mystery Project. I'm not sure what it's going to end up being at this point. So I've got this all hollowed out. Um, I've got plenty of videos showing the process of hollowing. I thought I'm not going to go into that. I found my hollowing tools and I've got that all hollowed out and I'm not sure how well you can see this. There we go, that might be better. So, I like it. I like that cast resin. It's really cool when you get it fairly thin and I was also able to find some of my measuring tools to make sure I didn't go through the side of that little vessel. Anyway, the next step is to find a piece of wood suitable for a little bit of a lid or a handle on this. And I'm still thinking maybe 
I'm going to go in the direction of an apple. Anyway, let me readjust my camera and we'll get back to work. All right, now eventually I'm going to reverse chuck this little piece and finish off the bottom. Right now what I'm doing is I'm fine tuning this with my scraper here, my spear point scraper. I'm going to start down here and come around and just take off any little tool marks that I've got in this piece. And also what I did is I went over to my grinding station and I put a little bit of a burr on these cutting edges. I just want to work my way up the side of this. As you can see, I'm getting some very nice shavings off that. Just a little bit more right here. I've got a little ridge. Alright, I think that's good. Now, you're probably hearing a little bit of vibration on that. I'm getting this fairly thin. Let's see if we can see that one more time here. And that's really cool. I think that's going to be a really pretty piece. Now, another issue, after I sand this, I need to put a little bit of color in right here where that burl is. It's got some color in there from my initial casting, or I'm not sure if I stabilized that. I probably did stabilize it, but I don't like that. It's just a little bit splotchy looking, so I'm going to try to fortify that uh, color and make it more uniform in there. I'll do a little bit of sanding, and I'm not sure how much I'm going to show you of the sanding. You've seen sanding before. All right. Time to do a little bit of uh, coloring on this piece. I've got some of my trans tint dye, and I'm going to just use a paper towel to apply this. Now, what I'm hoping is that there'll be enough contrast between the wood and the cast resin, and I think there will be. I think that'll be pretty cool. Sometimes you just never know what you're going to get. Yeah, I like that. Really shows off that burl figure very nicely. Before I left Warland, I have a friend, Jared, who lives up in the mountains towards Ten Sleep, Wyoming, lives on a ranch, and he is my burl source guy. He brought me five or six burls that I'm still kind of working on. They're all in storage right now. All right, so there we go. I've got that all colored, and I like that so far. I'm going to do a little bit more sanding on that. I sanded it up to about 800 grit and I'll let that dry, soak in a little bit, and then we'll go to the next step.